FTX recently launched their NFT marketplace and it has the potential to become the best NFT exchange out there. And if you're up to date on Binance YouTube, you've probably started to notice a lot of channels being sponsored by FTX. This video, however, is not sponsored. So FTX, if you're watching, shoot me an email. And overall, there's a lot of hype going on right now about FTX and their NFT platform, especially because of how low their fees are. My name is Devon Cook. Let's talk about FTX and welcome back to Dev Money. FTX actually first started off as a crypto exchange and it was founded back in May of 2019 by two MIT graduates, Sam Bankman Freed and Gary Wang. And pretty soon after launching FTX, it started to see some massive success. They're currently doing about seven and a half billion dollars in 30 day volume on their US crypto exchange. And FTX announced Serum, a new high speed non-custodial DEX or decentralized exchange that is built on Solana in July of 2020. They acquired Bockfolio for $150 million in August of 2020. In June of 2020, they acquired the naming rights to the Miami Heat basketball stadium and renamed it FTX Arena, which cost them about $135 million for that 19 year deal. In June of 2021, they also struck a deal with MLB and formed a partnership with Tom Tom Brady. They raised $900 million in July of 2021, which put them at an $18 billion market valuation. Mr. Wonderful, aka Kevin O'Leary, also signed on as an official spokesperson for FTX in August of 2021. And in September of 21, FTX announced that they would be sponsoring the Mercedes AMG F1 team and adding the logo to the cars and helmets of Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. And the famous basketball player Steph Curry has also signed on to be a brand ambassador for FTX. October of 2021 saw the launch of the Solana NFT platform on FTX. And then in December, they also added the capability to trade Ethereum NFTs. And most recently in January of 2022, they raised another $400 million, putting them at a $32 billion market valuation, which brings them ever closer to the Coinbase $55 billion market cap. So it's safe to say that the guys behind FTX have been very busy and so far they've been pretty successful. And if you want to go check out FTX for yourself and you're living in the United States, you just go to FTX.us, but anywhere else in the world, you can just use FTX.com. Now, what makes FTX different from other crypto exchanges or other NFT platforms? Well, there are a couple different things. And one of the first things that sets them apart is the fact that they support both Ethereum and Solana NFTs on their platform simultaneously. And this is really convenient for a lot of people because there are definitely lots of people in the NFT space that wanna have Solana NFTs and Ethereum NFTs. But in order to do that these days, you have to have a MetaMask wallet and a Phantom wallet, and you have to use OpenSea and Magic Eden and different exchanges. And you can't just go to one place to buy your Ethereum NFTs and your Solana NFTs. And right now, Ethereum is still by far the most popular blockchain for NFTs, but the high gas fees are making a lot of people rethink using Ethereum to buy their NFTs, especially those people who want to get into NFTs but are trying to do so as cheaply as possible. The high gas fees on Ethereum can just make them out of reach. And if you're someone that's wanting to try and trade NFTs and trade up and make money that way, well, it's a lot easier to trade NFTs when you're not having to worry about gas fees eating into your profits. And that's why a lot of people go to Solana. So having one platform that you can go to and you can trade with Solana and save on those gas fees, but also assuming you're a high roller can buy your doodle and your ape and your cool cat all at the same time is really easy and it's really convenient and it also puts a lot of pressure on OpenSea because you know there's a lot of us out there that wants to see Solana integration on OpenSea like yesterday. And another advantage that FTX has compared to its competitors is its fee structure for basically doing anything on its platform, whether with crypto or with NFTs. As an example, say you're looking to buy $1,000 in Bitcoin. Well, if you go over to Coinbase and buy that Bitcoin versus going to FTX, you're gonna be paying over 300% more just in fee to buy that same Bitcoin that you could buy on FTX. But keep in mind that if you're using Coinbase Pro, then you're only gonna be saving about 20% by using FTX over Coinbase Pro on that same $1,000 Bitcoin purchase. And you can really see that when you compare the rates. A $1,000 Bitcoin purchase on FTX is gonna cost you $4. On Coinbase, it's gonna cost you $14.90. And on Coinbase Pro, it's gonna cost you $5. So if you're using Coinbase, you really need to stop and either start using Coinbase Pro or start using FTX because you're 
you're spending way too much on fees. There are also zero ACH fees on FTX if it's your first ACH deposit, or if the deposit is over $100, or if your deposit is over $10 and you've deposited via ACH within the last week. And when you go to sell an NFT on OpenSea, you're gonna be paying 2.5% to OpenSea just for the pleasure of being able to use their platform. But when you go to sell an NFT on FTX, you're gonna be paying 2% to FTX, so you're saving about half a percent each time you sell an NFT. And keep in mind that the NFT marketplace looks rare also has that same 2% fee beating out OpenSea but matching FTX. And if you would like to save an extra 5% on your fees anytime you use FTX, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. And probably my favorite aspect of the FTX fee structure by far is that there is only a $1 fee, you heard me right, $1 to either mint, delist or list an NFT on FTX. And this is huge because this one thing probably could have prevented a lot of people losing their valuable NFTs via the OpenSea glitch that I just talked about in a recent video. If you're familiar with using Solana NFTs or Immutable X or another layer two scaling solution or another blockchain that has NFTs with zero trading fees, well then you know it's so nice to be able to just list your NFTs for sale without having to pay a $200, sometimes even a $300 gas fee just to list it. And whenever you withdraw draw your NFTs from FTX, they're going to be partially subsidizing that gas fee that you're paying as well. So that's just an extra bonus. Now you may be wondering, well, why do I need to withdraw my NFTs from FTX? That's weird. I've not heard of that before. FTX does operate pretty differently than OpenSea. With OpenSea, you're going to set up a non-custodial wallet like the Coinbase wallet or like MetaMask, which is super common. And then you're going to connect that wallet to OpenSea so you can buy, sell, or transfer your NFTs. And in that wallet you've chosen, whether it's a trust wallet, a MetaMask wallet, a Coinbase wallet, you're going to be storing all of your crypto and NFTs within that wallet and you have control over that wallet in its entirety. But with FTX being a custodial exchange, you're gonna create an account similar to how you would with creating a Bitski account, if you've ever done that. You're gonna use an email and a password and create an account just like you would anywhere else on the internet, like with your Google account or your Facebook account or your Instagram or basically any other account that you're used to seeing on the internet. So if you would like to send crypto or NFTs into your FTX wallet, you're just gonna hit the deposit Solana NFTs button or the deposit Ethereum NFTs button. It's gonna show you your wallet address, and then you'll use that wallet when you're transferring your NFTs from either Solana or Ethereum. And the upside of this method is you don't have to worry about protecting your private key or your seed phrase. And a lot of people are just way more familiar with using an email and a password and hitting that little forgotten password button whenever they forget it. But the downside is that you have to put your full trust into FTX to secure your seed phrase, your private key, and make sure that no one can hack into it and steal all of your crypto and NFTs. So it's really a personal decision, but a lot of people, myself included, in the NFT and crypto space really prefer to have control over their own seed phrase. Another benefit to using FTX is it's very streamlined and simple to use. And since they own both the crypto exchange and now the NFT exchange, there's a lot of benefits from having them intertwined. So if you've ever used Coinbase and transferred some money via ACH from your bank account into Coinbase and then bought Ethereum, you probably noticed that it's not so easy to transfer your Ethereum out of Coinbase, or at least not initially. And and that's because it can take five or six days for that ACH to totally clear and for Coinbase to allow you to transfer that new Ethereum that you just bought with those funds out to an external wallet like a MetaMask. And this can be extremely frustrating when you're trying to top up on ETH so you can list your NFT for sale because the floor price just went crazy. Or when you're trying to mint a new NFT project that has just launched and just announced and you're worried you're gonna miss out. So with FTX, you shouldn't have those same issues because you're gonna be buying the crypto on the same exchange that you can then then go buy the NFTs on. So you shouldn't have all this lag time waiting to be able to send your crypto out because your crypto is already on the exchange, ready to go and ready to purchase some NFTs. And I imagine with the coming Coinbase NFT marketplace that they will operate very similarly. Ideally, you'll be able to send money from your bank into Coinbase, immediately buy Ethereum, just like you can already do right now, and then immediately go use that Ethereum to buy NFTs on the Coinbase NFT marketplace. Hopefully that happens. If it does, that'll be awesome. And also just like with OpenSea, you can use FTX to mint a new NFT right on their platform. You can give it a photo, you can give the collection a name, and then you just mint that NFT for a $1 fee. Pretty nice. Oh, and also don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Like really, really smash it. But here's an interesting thing you've probably noticed about FTX if you got on and started looking at their NFTs. You've probably noticed that there's not a real wide selection of NFTs that you can choose to buy from. And that's just because you actually have to move your NFT. You have to transfer it from your wallet 
onto the FTX platform. And unless you do so, no one's gonna be able to make an offer on your NFT on FTX, and you won't be able to buy or see anyone else's NFTs unless they've transferred them to FTX. So you're not gonna have nearly the amount of NFTs to choose from as you do on OpenSea. And you're also not gonna be able to go into a collection and just browse through the entire collection and make offers on any NFTs within that collection. Take Doodles as an example. When I filmed this video, there were only nine listed on FTX out of the entire 10,000 Doodle collection. There's about 105 board apes listed on FTX, and you'll probably notice a little discrepancy in terms of the floor price. The apes have about 140 Ethereum floor price on FTX, but the floor price on OpenSea is about 99 Ethereum. Now that creates quite the arbitrage opportunity because if you can go buy an ape for 100 Ethereum on OpenSea and then immediately sell it for 140 Ethereum on FTX, well, you can pocket that 40 Ethereum and that's just easy money. But unfortunately, it's probably not that easy else a lot of people would be doing it and then this loophole would probably be closed. Because from the activity on FTX, I'm not seeing a single sale under Board Ape Yacht Club and I'm really just seeing a lot of bids, which means that people probably aren't actually buying their Board Apes on FTX, they're just bidding on them, which makes a lot of sense because if you buy one on FTX at this point, in my opinion, you're overpaying. And that brings us to the biggest thing that FTX needs in order to grow their platform. They need new users. No matter how great their fee structure is, no matter how streamlined it is, or how just awesome their whole platform is, none of that matters if no one is using it. So as long as FTX can continually bring new active traders onto their platform, then they'll probably do all right. But they need a lot more active traders because currently they're not even ranking in the top NFT exchanges. And overall, there's a lot of similarities between OpenSea and FTX, but there's also quite a few big differences as well. And those differences are really the exciting part, to me at least, because when a new platform like FTX or LooksRare comes around, it really makes the old guy on the block, OpenSea, have to innovate in order to stay relevant. And when you're getting innovation from the new kids like FTX and LooksRare, as well as from OpenSea, that just helps grow the entire NFT ecosystem because everyone is trying to improve so they can stay relevant. And that just makes it better for the entire NFT community as well. I think that FTX is doing a lot to set the new standard in terms of fee structure for NFT marketplaces, like with their $1 fee to list or delist an NFT. And I also really like what LooksRare is doing by giving back to the NFT community. And what's really awesome about cutting down fees is the more we can slash fees for buying NFTs, whether it's gas fees or exchange fees, the more users we're going to have enter the NFT marketplace, which means the bigger and better the NFT community is going to become as a whole. Thanks for watching.